a second piece. All right. So now uh, today we are going to talk about uh, force density and pressure. I hope you have submitted the previous work. If you haven't, please do it as soon as possible. So keeping uh, like the first thing we should know is about the Newton's third law, and uh, Newton's third law is defined as every action by so I'm just writing it like this by body A on body B has an equal and opposite reaction by body B on body A. Now the things I've written in bracket, why they're so important? Because you just need to remember that if there are two bodies, let's suppose A and there's a body B. So between A and B, if A does an action on B, then B would basically do an equal and opposite reaction on A. But then in the question they will confuse with another body C and they will try to make some connection between uh, B and C. So please make sure that do not include the third body at any cost, right? So do not include the third body. Now, for example, in this question it says, a book of weight W is at rest on the table. A student attempts to state Newton's third law of motion by saying that action equals reaction. So if the weight of the book is the action force, so weight of the book, right? So we are talking about this, what is the reaction force? Now first of all, I need to understand what yeah, exactly... For a little bit. Yeah, okay. So first of all, I need to understand that what exactly is weight, right? So weight is basically the gravitational force, which means that it is between the book and the earth. It has nothing to do with table right now, right? So then the reaction must be basically equal and opposite and it should also be between book and earth as well. So let's read the answers and see what might be correct. The force W acting downwards on earth from the table. That's not correct. Why it is not correct? Because currently we only, there are three things. There is book and earth. Earth pulls the book and there is table, right? So right now they're making a connection between earth and table, which uh, is not required, right? So this would be absolutely wrong. Then it, it says the force W acting upwards on the book from the table. That is again wrong because now they're making connection between book and table. We are looking for book and earth only. So that would be wrong as well. The force W acting upwards on earth from the book. So this is the correct answer because it's saying the same amount of force W which is basically the book is attracting earth with the same amount so that would be the reaction because if book is being pulled by earth book will pull earth by the same amount all right is that clear everyone any questions 
The last one is between table and floor. That is also wrong because it has nothing to do with the first two bodies involved in the action. All right. If you have any questions that you want to bring up, please let me know. All right then. So speaking that, speaking about that, then we're gonna talk about. Uh, things like let me let me just see one one thing wait a second please Let's see here okay and all, obviously I need to cover it up this all right fine so now we are going to talk about um, the next part so the next question is very similar I would like to give you uh, this has homework because it's basically the same concept that I've just told you and I hope you will be able to do it if you still don't understand it please do let me know I will help you with that okay anyway now let's go forward then so who exactly is not here Aman is not here and a couple of other people which we have wait a second please Okay, now going forward, so now we're going to learn about the drag force and um, the drag force is pretty simple. Okay, now, so drag is basically a force that opposes motion and it depends on number one uh, the radius which is basically the surface area then it depends on the velocity velocity and then it depends on the viscosity all right let me explain what what velocity so basically greater the velocity larger the drag force okay it is just like you know you you basically take out your hand from uh, a moving car you will be hit by more air you will feel more drag but when the car stopped you don't feel that much air because uh, there's no drag so basically if you increase speed the opposition also increases Viscosity is basically uh, the measure of how difficult it is for a fluid to flow, which means obviously uh, if you try to swim in like ketchup, it would be harder for you because it is more viscous than water. So answering was for honey. So it really depends on how thick the liquid is and if it's thicker then obviously you will feel more drag. Right? So you just need to remember that. You don't have to learn the formula, you don't have to learn anything else, just these factors and mostly the questions will be about velocity so it's alright.
Okay, let me know if you have a question, please. Okay. So then we are going to talk about just quickly we're going to look at these things. So mass is the amount of matter packed in a body. Weight is the gravitational pull on a body. Volume is basically space occupied by a body. Density is just mass over volume. You can directly like it like this or you can write per unit volume if you like. It's alright. And pressure is force per unit area like that. Then mass symbol is small m, weight is capital W, volume is capital V, density is rho, and pressure is small p. The SI units for mass are kgs, weight is uh, newtons, volume is meter cube, density is kg per meter cube, and pressure is pascals or newton per meter square, like that. Now mass so can, can I, yes. Can I hold for a second? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Done. Okay. Now. Mass so, can, yeah. Viscosity basically means have you ever tried to take out ketchup from a bottle? Yes, sir. Is it hard or it is easy? Sir, hard. Why? Because ketchup is a thick liquid which means it its viscosity is more so it's difficult for it to flow all right but if you okay, add sir. water into the same bottle would it be easy or hard for you to just take it out say easy easy because water is less uh, viscous do you understand yes sir so if you're moving through ketchup and water so it would be harder for you to move in ketchup because it has greater resistance is it clear yes sir so anything that resists your motion is called drag is it clear okay then should I go forward now? Do you understand everything? Okay. Now. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, Vidya. So now we are going to go towards. Um, uh, yeah. So mass can be uh, basically found by an electronic balance. Weight can be found by Newton meter. Newton meter, other name is spring balance as well. So both are the same thing. Volume is kind of different because volume basically has like regular shapes. First of all, we're going to talk about the regular shapes. So for a cube, we're going to take volume as length cube for a cuboid we're gonna take it as length into breadth into height for a cylinder so in, in physics there are a couple of shapes that you need to remember so it's basically pi r square 
edge and obviously for a sphere it is going to be 4 by 3 by r cube so these formulas should you should remember the other thing for irregular shapes like they will never ask you this but you still should remember for irregular shape we use water displacement method and if you remember from your IGCSEs it should be like you add some liquid and then you add that particular irregular shape into it in a measuring cylinder and then obviously you can find the change in volume to find the volume of object right do you guys remember this all right is there any question now yaya zahan wajiha umar suhail ryan munim maham khadija squares laiba javeria aman okay Correct copy, mm, yeah. Okay, you can copy, please. I'm a little bit upwards. Okay, now I uh, just want to tell you for density, it's pretty easy. You just have the formula which is basically density equals to mass over volume, you can find the density through that density is a unique value for each material in fact because it is a unique value we use this to categorize different materials all right anyway then pressure has two formulas force over area and pressure is equal to rho gh and then pressure can be found out by two other things as well like the barometer is used to find atmospheric pressure and the manometer is used to find the difference of pressure and we're going to use them both in the questions, so just write them down. Please. Okay. Right. Okay, I think I should go forward now. You guys have copied this? Yes. Okay. So this is just to remind you of the old days. And now we're going to go towards the question. So, I found this question very interesting. And uh, this is a fairly new one. So, in this particular question, it says that you need to find... Um, you need to find the uh, you, uh, there's an object uh, as in hemisphere uh, hemisphere is the half sphere by the way if you don't know and then it says that rest on a flat surface and the object has a radius r and density p and obviously it wants us to find the volume is given in the table so this is what we need to find all right so keeping that in mind So first of all, we need to understand that pressure is force over area. Now naturally, a hemisphere, if you view it from the top, so you would realize that hemisphere is basically like a circle, right? So there should be a circle. So we have an area which has a radius r, and the area of a circle is pi r square, right? Like that. Then you got... Um, this particular um, object which means that uh, to find the force we got to find the weight of this 
and to find the weight we should understand that we need mass because weight is mg right because we don't have mass to, to find the mass then we have to use that as density times the volume because mass is basic density is mass over volume that's why so density of this object is rho like they have given it and the volume of this object would be 4 by 4 by 3 pi r cube and since it is a hemisphere which means we got divided by 2 as well because hemisphere would mean that it's half the volume of a sphere right so that would basically make it rho times 3 into 2 is 6 so 4 pi r cube over 6 like that okay if you want to further simplify it it would be 2 by 3 pi r cube times rho so this is the mass and now uh, if we want to find the weight it would be this mass into acceleration due to gravity so 2 by 3 pi r cube times oh, times rho times g is it clear up till now any, everybody so now yes, we, we got the weight and we know pressure is force over area so weight would be 2 by 3 pi r cube rho times g and then we got to divide by area which is just pi r square okay now keeping that in mind we should understand that this 3 cancel with this like 3 r's on top 2 at the bottom they cancel out pi cancels with pi I don't think so anything else is left so it should be 2 by 3 rho sorry r rho and g and I think that should be this answer is it clear? yes yes although it's a fairly like it seems like a difficult question but if you just follow the table that I've you know made you write you can find every answer there and you can plug in the values and do step by step so you understand what are you leading up to right so that's an uh, easy way to solve these questions anyway should I move forward then yes sir I don't think I give you another question like this okay now four marks derivation of rho gh will be there uh, many many times and you should learn it step by step so I'm gonna just draw a figure first so basically you need to draw a cylinder oh my goodness my cylinder got all tilted let me pick it like this okay and this and this and this okay you can make a cylinder you can make anything else it's, it's all right so when to make a cylinder you should understand that obviously cylinder will have a certain volume right and let's suppose you have basically submerged it like this and this is the water surface which means that at the at the top the depth is this h and this is where the water will exert pressure on this cylinder all right so this is the pressure now so speaking of this then we should always understand that generally volume is given by area times the height like the area of this is pi r square and the height is h so that's the general formula of any volume we should remember that and keeping that in mind what I can do is I can write it as V equals to A times H and then I would like to put it like area equals to volume times height like that all right so let's make this as our first equation and then we are gonna find the weight of water on top right so that is going to be W and that is the force that is acting right on the top and that force should be equal to mg okay the third thing we know is that pressure is given by 
force over area and if it is like that then we should remember force is mg and area is just a right now so this would be our second equation like that now what are we going to do is we're going to plug in this equation right into this equation we're going to replace a and if i do that then it's going to be pressure equals to mg and instead of area i can write volume over height because height is being divided like twice so it will go up so it will make it as mgh over v and if you notice this side v m over v so we know that density is mass over volume we can plug it in and that will lead us to pressure equals to rho sorry pressure equals to rho g and h and that's how you're gonna prove oh my goodness this particular part all right is there anybody who could not understand this please let me know Now in the next question it says the pressure on air of the air at the top of the mountain is less than at the foot of the mountain. Explain why the difference of air pressure is not proportional to difference of height suggested by the relationship. Now there are a couple of things that I would like to tell you before we move on. The first thing I would like to tell you that pressure depends on three basic things, right? So it depends on the density of fluid which means whatever fluid you're putting it in whether it's air uh, water any other liquid like oil or whatever and then the gravitational field strength obviously that depends on how like gravitational field strength decreases as you go away from earth or whatever planet you're on and the third thing it depends on is the height uh, in fact i'll write it as depth the reason is that the deeper you go, the pressure is going to be higher because according to this formula, all of these things are directly proportional to pressure, right? But the more, you know, important thing to understand is pressure does not depend on number one, shape, number two, size number three color so it does not depend on any other physical property except for the depth gravitational field strength and obviously the density of the fluid that you put that particular object in do you guys understand this yes, now what the question is asking you that even though according to our formula pressure is directly proportional to h why is it so that between like the at the mountain and uh, near the you know sea it would be different pressure the reason why it would be different pressure is because of two things number one the density of air is not the same at different heights so basically as you go up right so density of air decreases and obviously then if it is decreasing it is also playing a part in changing the pressure so then h would not be proportional directly and the other thing is that the gravitational field strength lowers as we go higher towards mountains right because obviously you're moving quite away from the center of earth and that's why the pressure would not change proportionally is it clear everyone yes okay please write this down this is very important Hmm. Interesting. 
All right. Now we're gonna go forward and uh, should I skip? Should I move to the next page, please? Okay. So this question is a very similar question and it appeared again this is your homework this is just to practice that you can actually show this this is a three mark derivation you can do this i hope so now that you've learned it at the back so i i certainly hope you will do it but this is the question that i want to do and this is a um, tough cookie okay so in this question it says water flows out a pipe and hits a wall fair enough when the jet of water hits the wall it has a horizontal velocity of v and a cross section area a the density of water is this the water does not rebound from the wall which basically means that at this point if the initial velocity was v the final velocity has to be zero and then it says what is the force uh, exerted on the wall by the water fair enough now force I need to find but obviously to find the force I also know that force itself is rate of change of momentum anybody remembers that yes and the moment in any question if they give you mass velocity together with force you should come to this point that you are going to use momentum all right so we're going to use mv minus mu over t the final velocity is zero the initial velocity has to be m times v and the time is t and force will be basically if you just talk about the magnitude it's going to be v mv over t now the issue with this is that all these answers that i see does not have time in them fair enough we don't need that but because they're talking about area so to include the area and force so then you should understand that pressure is given by force over area and force then will be definitely be equal to pressure times area you guys agree yeah If I put like if I put this right here, then you might understand that basically it will cause it to be m v over t equals to pressure times area. Now, somehow, if you notice, uh, there is basically hardly any pressure. All right, so. We are going to, you know, convert it, and there's no mass as well. So we need to, you know, do something about this. And because there's density all over here in each question, so I'll come here and start working on density as well. So this is how my thought process is working. So I know density is mass over volume. This gives me an ideal opportunity so to simply get rid of this mass right here. Okay. So I know mass is density times volume. I'm going to put into that equation. So that would become density times volume times V over T equals to pressure times area, right? So can you please repeat this step? Okay. In fact, I'll do it again. Basically, I said it on the wrong foot because of... Uh, I didn't realize they want force, not pressure. All right, let me just do it again. So first of all, what I'm saying is, your first step should be the force is rate of change of momentum. Momentum has to be mv minus mu over t. The final momentum was zero, initial was mv over t. We are just looking at the magnitude, so we're just gonna take mv over t, right? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. 
now so what i want is in the answers if you look at the answers there's no mass in them there's density in them right and if there's density then i should understand the density is mass over volume and if i could write it as mass equals to density times volume is it okay with you Yeah. Yes. And then can I put it like can I put this here to replace mass? And this way I'm going to get density times volume times velocity over time. What do you say? Do you agree? Please. Uh the blue part? Yes. Sir. Okay. So what I did was I made mass the subject of the equation and I'm now basically replacing this mass right into this equation. Do you understand that? Okay. You get it? So yes, instead of like writing this what I can do is I can write force equals density times volume. This is basically the mass times velocity over time do you agree yeah okay then yes okay fair enough so then um yeah where was i all right so here was i so now i have basically in all these i have area i have you know couple of things and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use i need to get rid of this volume somehow and this time and i need to think here right how about i know that volume is area times the uh, height the third length can i say that please yeah yes sir. can i then put this volume value here would you mind okay thank you so this would be density times area times height instead of volume times velocity over t can i write it like this please look at it please yes okay cool so you guys understand this now look at this what is length over time can you please velocity. velocity so then can i write it as density times area times velocity times velocity yes velocity squared so it would be uh, density times area times velocity squared that makes it this answer very tough question right but that's how you going to in the exam again i'm telling you the moment you hear these three things together you should always remember this equation and the moment you should remember like there's density you can always remember this equation or rho gh or whatever it would help you find the answer is it clear yes sir yes sir okay write this down this is very important this just yes, you know sir. i'm i'm trying to build a mind map all right in my head i'm always thinking okay from the answers what is it that i need to replace and the tip to always replace something is i'm writing this tip here which is very important make the variable subject that you want to replace now i'll tell you a couple of things here if you notice i made mass the subject but there was no mass in these right I made the ma I made mass the subject to replace it right here and then it was gone right and then I made volume the subject to replace the volume right here and it got me here and that's how you know I always get the right answer so whenever you want to replace something you make that particular variable the subject of the equation and then put the other things into the main equation you'll get the answer is it clear Yes. Sir. Okay. Now, speaking of this, then, um, 
the next question i want you guys to do it yourself okay this is pretty easy but it just needs a little bit of thinking and if you don't understand it yourself you can ask me in the next class it's all right now let's go forward okay so this is a very similar question as well uh, that's your homework as well and we're going to move towards up thrust now so up thrust is the most recurring topic within this force density pressure and this would be like in almost every paper every paper so you should really focus on this right the definition that you need to give to the examiner of up thrust is that it is a force due to the difference of pressure acting on a body submerged in a fluid all right fluid is just uh, anything that can flow it could be liquid or gas or in like if solids have like they're in small beads they can also flow so fluid is like that anyway up thrust basically comes from archimedes principle and archimedes has said that up thrust is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced all right right now you might not understand this this definition but as we progress you will understand it don't worry, don't worry about that so just hang on tight all right you can write this down then we're going to go forward okay done should i go forward now all right so suppose right now we're taking fluid as water and the density of water is rho let's keep it like that and there is a box that's submerged into uh, the water so you should understand that we have learned that pressure is like proportional to the depth which means the greater the depth is the pressure will be higher so at the top of this because the depth is smaller the pressure would be lower like that and let's call this pressure on top and then at the bottom the pressure will be maximum and the reason why it is maximum because it is at a greater depth like that okay so let's call this pressure uh at bottom pressure acts from all sides which means on the sides it's going to be somewhat like it would increase slowly like that like that and like that and on the other side it would be the same now the sides do not matter the reason why they don't matter is because the pressure on both the sides are equally increasing and the effect of the pressure on both sides is sort of cancelled out but because there is a difference of pressure on top and bottom that would basically create a difference in force like there will be a force on top and there will be a greater force at the bottom basically that bottom force is causing it to um, you know uh, try trying to push it uh, up top let me write it correctly please okay now so keeping that in mind then we're going to work out the derivation of this first of all we should understand that obviously 
we are looking at something like a difference of pressure which is basically the pressure at the bottom minus pressure at the top and we should understand that this pressure is density times g times depth till the bottom minus density times g times depth till the top so if you notice the real difference basically starts from here and this is the difference in height between these two depths right so we're going to say difference in pressure is due to rho g and we can write it as h bottom minus h top and further we can write it as rho g delta h just to make it simpler is it clear everyone yes sir okay now since we know that in reality pressure is given by force over area so right now we're looking at the difference in force and the area on top and bottom same so it doesn't really matter so the difference of basically like i can write the change in force can be written as difference in pressure times area and this will be rho g h sorry difference in height times area if you just look at this section you might realize that this basically gives you sort of difference in volume which is caused by you know the uh, object itself which is given by area times difference in height and then we can conclude this derivation by writing that this difference in force is caused by rho g change in volume and that is called the up thrust now so what is this difference in volume basically difference in volume is this section uh, let me just use a different color this section right so basically the volume of the object when you put it in a liquid that causes the liquid to displace from that region and you know be pushed up so what volume does it to regain its original status it wants to push this object out of it so that you know it can retain that that balance right and when doing so it causes an up thrust right which is equal to obviously the density of the liquid g is the acceleration due to gravity and change in volume which is the volume of uh, object or fluid so i'm going to write these down and you guys can basically then write them so this is the density of fluid this is basically acceleration due to gravity in other words you can write gravitation field strength and that is the volume of fluid displaced or we can write it as the volume of object itself because this is the amount of volume that is equal to the volume of fluid that was displaced because of it all right is it clear everyone Could you please repeat the volume part? Yes. So, so basically, I'm I'm going to take back, I'm going to take you back to the or, or you know IGs. You must remember, you must have remember that basically when you used to add some volume into the cylinder, right? Did you? And then you would put a. like an object into it so the volume would increase do you understand do you remember that so we would take this change in volume yes, this is the amount of volume that was displaced because of this and this volume we used to say this is the volume of that stone right so this volume that you found out here is basically the same volume which is the volume of the object you put into the liquid that has displaced 
this amount of liquid. Do you understand now? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what I've written. Clear? Yes. Cool. So then, interesting. So then I'm going to go towards this section. Who can tell me which is the right diagram actually? A. Sir, A. A. The reason why it is A because obviously this pressure should be greater but this, this and this are the same height. They should be equal and this and this should be equal. And that's how you should uh, go on about it and should increase. So this is pretty easy. They will give you such questions and obviously you should understand that. Finally, we are going to move towards the last part of today's lesson, which is to prove Archimedes' principle. Now, what Archimedes has said, let's go review that back. So Archimedes said, upthrust is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. And right now from the equation, we have learned that upthrust is equal to rho g delta v. You guys agree? Yes. If I write upthrust as rho times delta V times Z, would you guys mind it? No. This is the density of fluid and this we just learned is the uh, volume of fluid displaced. Can I say, because density is mass over volume, so mass would be density times volume. Can I write that? Yes. So if you look at this, so density of fluid and the volume of fluid that was displaced would basically give us upthrust equals to mass of that fluid times G. What is this mass? This is basically the mass of fluid displaced. That would mean that mg is the weight. So it means upthrust will be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. And that is what Archimedes has said. Is it clear? Yes. Okay then.